What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the podcast. I'm your host, Kevin, and today we have a very special guest. You might have seen him on Instagram. It's Ball Valve TV. Shout out to my boy, Mike Ball, who was in a motorcycle accident that resulted in him having to get his leg amputated, his left leg amputated from the knee down. Mike Ball, welcome to the channel. How you doing, my man? Hey, man. I, I can't thank you guys enough for, especially you, for allowing me to be on the platform, first and foremost, and uh, I'm I'm honored First of all, so thank you for having me on the show. I'm I'm, I'm doing great. Nah, my man, look, thank you for coming on the show. I'm very interested in talking to you, hearing your story. How you doing? Yeah, no, it's it's gonna be good, man. I'm doing well. I'm doing well. How about yourself, man? I'm I'm I'm, I'm doing great. I mean, I can't complain. I can't complain. I see you got the little Lego set in the background. Look, I mess yeah. with the Legos. I mess with look, the Legos. You know, it's funny is is. My mom got it for me. Shout out yeah. to my mom. Oh, okay. but, she, but I, I, I just won't build it. Like I don't know. I'm lazy. Nah, <laughs> hey man, look, look. One, one thing, one thing about them Lego sets, they, they look, they get addicting, but they are very pricey. Dude, All right, that's a creator set, so I, I'm pretty sure it was expensive. I had a Mersk ship when growing up. It's like yeah. this big. It was mm-hmm. no joke. It was like. I can't re- remember. It was a ridiculous amount of pieces, but it, mm-hmm. me and my mom did it like as little kids. But when I was a little kid, yeah, and, For real? and it was it was like it was like ten thousand pieces. It was ridiculous. Uh, oh, bro! Yeah, look, was, look, yo, when it comes to Legos, they can get uh, look the pieces. No, nah, dude, it's insane. They can get big, and they can also get very pricey. No, you yeah, know? we we each one that we put on, we actually glued. Oh, so, yeah, okay. we glued each Lego as we went. Okay, yeah, so it was okay. crazy. And then one thing I do like about Legos is that they can get very personal, you know. So, yeah. so yeah. they so, so they do Facts. come out with sets that relate to individuals like yourself. Like, uh, so I'm guessing you've always been into motorcycles. Was that something yes. that you've always been into? That's that's been something that has been a big interest of mine since I was a little kid. Uh, mm. You know, my uncles always rode around on Harleys, not mm, particularly okay. like in motorcycle clubs or anything. They just yeah. were just into Harleys. And okay. I was obviously as a little kid, I wanted to ride, but I was riding dirt bikes. So mm. all my uncles, my dad, you know, we would all ride dirt bikes together and stuff like that. Yeah. So I started at a young age riding dirt bikes and then I got into motocross and did that for many of right. years. And um, that was that was a lot of fun, actually. I, I'm was super of, jealous. I'm super that, jealous, that, that, bro. Some, I've always wanted to ride dirt bikes dude, and do it was, motocross, it was, bro. It, it's a different level of feeling. I don't know what it is. It's like a freeing feeling. I, I don't know yeah. what it is. It, but, yeah, big, doing those big jumps is fun, and especially as a little kid, you know? Yeah. And um, But, yeah, anyways, uh, I, was, I was about 18 years old when I flipped my bike doing a big trail with my, with my uncle. And we were going straight up a mountain and I actually Mm. flipped the bike upside down, you know, and then it landed on top of me and I landed, you know, on a rock and then fell down. So it definitely made me think about it for a second and be like, all right, I need a little break from this. You know what I mean? Because like, I didn't like Mm -hmm. completely injure myself, but I kind of like spooked myself. Yeah. So then it wasn't until I was like 23 when I bought my first Harley, I bought my first Harley Ooh. and I bought an FXDB. It's a, it's, it's, we call them in the, in our culture, the club style dinas. Um, okay. they, they, they are, I don't know the the typical riding club dude, Dyna bro kind of motorcycle. Okay. That's, that's what they are. Okay. So, so what, so what is that motorcycle behind you? Because it so looks this like a Harley a, Davidson. So, yeah, it so is. what type of model is that? This is a fat boy. So there's fat okay. bobs. There's fat boys. There's there's uh, street glides. There's road glides. There's uh, mm. you've got soft tails. You've got dinas. You've got, I mean, you've got mm. so many different choices within the yeah. motorcycle. I would say that that, you know? that that would probably be one of the most popular ones out there. Like of the Harley Davidson models, or this no? one? No, yeah. this one. Believe it or not, I would say is probably one of the least uh, mm, popular. That looked like the one know? that Terminator had in Terminator Two, though. It, it you yeah. know, it might be. It might be. It might to be. be. I, I, don't it might be. I don't know. I don't know. And you might okay. have to. You might have to check that after the show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know I, f- I feel like growing up as young men, I feel like we all have at at a certain age, we all have a fascination with motorcycles versus you know whether it's crotch rockets or Harley Davidsons. Because I know I was always it's, into the crotch rocket, but one thing was I never got to ride them. 
You know, and then as I grew up a little bit, you know, I would watch the Disney Channel with my sister, and they had this, it was a movie called, like, Motocross, I believe, and Mm -hmm. I always wanted to ride dirt bikes, but I never really had the opportunity. It was a little too too pricey for us. So nobody nobody really rode dirt bikes where we lived at, too, so it was just like, yeah, it wasn't really happening. Yeah, you didn't. I mean, it's an opportunity. Like, if if you're if you're there, you know what I mean. Like here in California, you can literally go to. Mm. You can go surf in the morning. You can go dirt biking in 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 the in the you know late or early afternoon, Mm -hmm. and then be you know on the ski slopes two hours later, and then back at home. You know, after you went, Mm -hmm. you just went through the entire bit of you know nature. All, all in one day, you know, okay. it's kind of crazy, but that's what I kind of used to do. You know, I was yeah. very active. And so oh, okay. I don't know. I, I, I just loved riding like that, that, that thought of riding, like, as you said, it's like people have either a fascination of like that crotch rocket thing, like whether it be speed, mm. you know, for me, it was more like, I want to cruise. I want to ride, you know, I want to enjoy the, okay. I want to enjoy the ride. Like I'm not here for the need for speed kind of action. You know what I mean? And um, unfortunately, I, I do know of other people that have been in accidents, motorcycle accidents, where they have lost their leg. And it was because they were on crotch rockets doing, you know, yeah. 200 miles per hour, you know, something mm, stupid. Okay. You know, yeah. and, and that's unfortunate. I, I really, yeah. but the thing is, is like, you got to ride responsible at the same time. You got to hold, mm-hmm. you got to hold yourself accountable. You know yeah. what I mean? Like if I'm, if I'm driving on, in my car at 180 mm-hmm. miles per hour and I crash, well, that's, I deserve it. Yeah. You know what I mean? I asked for it. So, mm-hmm. but I don't know, like yeah. the, the, the motorcycle thing, I, I just, I, it was a fascination of mine and it was something that I, I needed in my life. So when I was 23, okay. I got a very good opportunity to buy a very high end, uh, Basically, let's just say tricked out everything, every part that you would ever want, every on this motorcycle was perfect. It was done. Fully loaded. Yeah, fully loaded it is as hardcore as it gets. And I got it as cheap as it gets. It like impossible mm. cheap because it was, it was a really good friend of mine. It was one of my tattoo artists. You know what I mean? Oh, okay. So that's where I kind of got that heavy inspiration from as well because they were in the you know because i was getting tattooed a lot and they're all my friends from the family and stuff so knowing them growing up as well being in the shops and stuff like that and though i wasn't 18 i wasn't getting tattoos or nothing but i would still be around and and i would i would be like all right i'd check out what they're doing and and a lot of these guys were connected to the one percent clubs you know what i mean Mm -hmm. because they're they're tattooing the 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 one percent diamond culture, you know, guys mm-hmm. from the motorcycle club scene. Yeah. So that's really what kind of got me super kind of like, I don't know. I, I was like, man, I'm really interested in that. Like I saw, like I would see these guys pull up and it'd be like yeah. 18 of them, you know what I mean? And they're just like coming in solid. And it was like that they just moved the crowd. When I saw that, I was like, I want, I like that. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah. Like I, it was like, it drew me in. I don't know what it was. Other than that, okay. you know, it, it looked okay. like a true brotherhood. Yeah, it does. It does. And, you know, for somebody who has n- like, n- bro, I don't have no knowledge of a motorcycle sure. club, but I heard you say the term 1% or yes. 1%. What does that mean? Like, okay, like, so I have no so, clue what it means. So, uh, so what does it yeah, mean? Yeah, so, so there's the 99% they call it. Okay. The 99% world is there's a lot of motorcycle clubs that are traditional motorcycle clubs that are law abiding mm-hmm. citizens. You know what I mean? They're, they're, yeah. they're in clubs, but they're in the 99% world. They're the guys that don't, you know, the, the that's just their law abiding like that yeah. to the law. Now in the 1% culture is the quote unquote outlaws. Mm-hmm. The difference is, is it's not about them like being outlaws to the cops. The thing is, okay. is from my knowledge, these guys hold themselves accountable more than, let's say, the government would. Trust me, these guys that think that, like, oh, yeah, these guys can just run a street and shoot up people and do, like, like whatever, like, the, the, how the public perception is, 
because mm-hmm. I know I know how the public perception is on it. And it's like, no, believe it or not, like these guys are like, go in and join a 1% motorcycle club and see how many freaking rules there are. You know what I mean? I mean it's the more rules than you've ever seen in your life. You know, so it's, it's a, so the 1% world, the one percenter is the guy that has earned his way all the way to the top of the chain. And that's what we consider the diamond. It's in a 1%. They 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 have it usually on their chest, and uh, okay. you'll see it on you'll see it up there, and it'll it'll show one percent, you know, and that's that's how you know you've got a you know a diamond around you, you know. Okay, and those those are guys that hold themselves to a certain moral and ethic code. Okay, that's what's up. That's what's up. You see, look, look, I've. Ne- I- I've, honestly, I've heard the term all my life. Dude, anytime, I did, I anytime you dive into a culture that you don't know, yeah. that's what oftentimes when we learn the most. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's what I love yeah. about it. Okay. You know? Okay. And and also, I heard you say earlier that you were from California. So is that where you're yep. from? Is that where yep. you grew up? Where'd you grow up at? So I grew up in Long Beach. I was born okay. and raised. I was taken home to San Pedro place called okay. San Pedro. There's uh, a harbor there as well in Long Beach, but I've moved to North Long Beach kind of, I guess it's like mid Long Beach. Um, mm-hmm. Moved over there when I was two years old. And then I was okay. there until I was 12. So I stayed there for mm-hmm. 10 years. Okay. That, so that was like my real like child childhood. And then I moved to Huntington Beach in Orange County after I had two guns put to my head. Okay. So once that happened, my dad was like, all right, we've got to get out of this situation, whatever it is. And he's like, let's, let's go ahead and move. You know what I mean? Because I got out of that situation. I was like I, 12 years old, you know, dealing with something yeah. like that. It was, you know, it was, it was a legit, like they were trying to kidnap me, you yeah. know? So anyways, um, so we moved to Huntington Beach when I was 12 and then I, I was there until... Uh, all the way through my accident, you know, okay. uh, I didn't move out until after my accident. Mm, okay. Yep. Okay. Yep. All right. Pretty now, well. now leading up all the way to your leading up all the way to your accident, how long had you been riding motorcycles until that day? Well, I would say that I was riding probably, I was riding Harleys for probably about a year, or two years, probably two years okay. by then. Okay. Um, now, 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 is riding Harley's like a different type of ride? Is it? Yes. Like, uh, it's it's in what way? it's a it's a way heavier bike. Like for instance, okay. like these are seven, eight, nine hundred pound motorcycles oh. compared to you know you've got you've got these rice rockets that are 250, 300 pounds. You know what I mean? Oh, okay. Yeah, so when you've got these Harleys, it's it's a different ride. It's a it's a totally different mentality. And see, I wasn't in it for the what everyone else kind of like the individual person likes to do, like to just ride freely. You know, I was like more in the club mentality. I wanted to be in a pack. Okay. I wanted to I wanted to be in that pack, like looking like we're coming in professional. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It's like we're coming in and we're organized. You know, we we know what we're doing. We're, we 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 have a we have a whole mission. You know what I mean? We come in with purpose. Yeah. You know, so that's okay. that's kind of the 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 big thing that drew me in was like that riding fender to fender, riding you know an inch from a handlebar, handlebar to handlebar. And you're literally six inches apart on the front fender and six inches behind you. You've got another guy, you know, and you're riding suicide. That's what they call it oh, for yeah. obvious oh, okay. reasons. But they, they call it, it suicide because if let's say one guy goes down in the front, yeah. we're going to all tumble. So that's why as brothers, when, when you're riding on the road, like you have to trust your brothers to the fullest extent. Okay. The guy that's riding next to you, you better trust him with your life. I mean, because this is not an, uh, like a, 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 you know, different clubs will ride like where one's like this and one's up here and they'll ride staggered. So they have a whole lane to be able to play with. You know what I mean? Motorcycle clubs don't play that. We have two to a lane. 
Okay, now now on the day of your incident, were you riding in a pack like that or were you riding solo? Both, actually. So oh. what ended up happening is I was riding home from a charity event that I had okay. attended with my motorcycle club at the time. Mm. And um, when we did that, we had a, an amazing uh, – we fed the homeless. We fed a, a, most of Orange County. We had a, a massive donation through, like, churches and stuff that, that we organized together as well. Okay. Uh, I mean, we were getting truckloads delivered. It was amazing. Okay. And it was now, a life-changing day. Yeah. Now, now, was this something that I did a lot, or was this, like, you know, like a one? Yes. Like, like motorcycle thing, clubs, or? like, people don't know it because – Let's let's be honest. What bleeds leads. You know mm. what I mean. Uh, okay. People people aren't going to talk about the good that motorcycle clubs do or what people do yeah. really because they're not interesting. You know. Uh, yeah. But motorcycle clubs, you can I can pretty much t- tell you that almost every single one of them do exactly like charity. You know, they're giving away stuff. They're they're helping the community somehow. And this is like a, a big misconception as well. Like people think that like these are dangerous people believe it or not people realize after there's a motorcycle club let's say in the ghetto and the, and there's and there's a motorcycle club that comes in and they get a clubhouse there you ask the residents of those area after they've been there for 5 10 years you ask mm-hmm. them they feel safer with them there because they keep the streets clean they keep everyone off of the street you know what i mean like they keep people pushing so they actually feel more safe, the people that live by them. Mm. So it's kind of interesting. But to get back to your question, that's cra- is no, I lost. Nah, that's crazy because I would have never known anything like that because coming where yeah. I come from, it's not like I would say like back in the day, I didn't really see that. Or, you know, I, I didn't grow up in that, uh, in that culture to where I got right. to see that. So, you know, me on the outside looking in, it's kind of fascinating to kind of hear that. Absolutely. So, Absolutely. Because yeah. it's, it's like I said, public perception. People don't know about these things. Exactly. You know, it's the movies. It's the it's movies. The, it's the, it's the Sons of Anarchy. Show. It's the Sons of yep, Anarchy. Yep, it's it's yep, the Martins. Yep. You know what I mean? And shout out to them, by the way, because uh, believe it or not, uh, you know, I got a lot of friends in the cast. You know, so much shout out to them. But, mm-hmm. but yes, the, unfortunately, uh, stuff like that did turn public perception even worse than it was before. Okay. Okay. All right. Now, on the day of your incident, how would you say that that day was going? You said you said you was having an amazing time. A right. It was it was a, it was a great day. day. It was it was a yeah. fantastic day. We were giving away so much stuff, and so mm. as we were riding back, I was riding in the pack together. Okay. And and when we get close to each other's like area, like we break off, you know, from the pack okay. because we're we're it's like, hey, you've made it home. You know, you're safe. Oh. Like, okay. they're riding like down the beach. Home too. Yeah, they're riding down the beach, okay. and people are breaking off as they live. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah. So I had broken off from the pack. So I broke uh, off, and I'm riding by myself because it's literally a block, two blocks away. Mm-hmm. I'm two blocks away from home. You know what I mean? From that turn. Yeah. And so when I do that turn... Then I get a block away from home, and that's where the accident happened. You know, unfortunately, a a drunk driver. She was uh, seventy three years old, and she made an illegal left turn over two lanes in a housing track. So she made that turn at eighty miles per hour, according to the police report. So you can only imagine, you know, taking a turn, a ninety degree turn at eighty miles per hour so as as this is happening as i'm seeing it happen i'm riding and as i'm riding i can see this person's about to to like come to me and uh, like make that you can tell the body language of a car yeah i could see it like moving you know and i could see it about to like want to go so i'm like whoa 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 and i'm and i'm like just seeing out of my peripheral vision just when I can't see, I couldn't see her anymore. That's when I got hit. So it was, it was, mm. it hit, she T-boned me right then and there and severed my leg off at the scene. So she tore off my leg. I went flying. So I'm mid flying and I go flying down the road. I forget how many feet, 
but it was a very far away. And um, unfortunately, when when I looked down, when I finally stopped tumbling, uh, when I looked down, I had no left leg. And um, as soon as I saw that, the blood was coming out like literally like it was coming out like a garden hose. So I'm seeing this happen and I'm going, oh my God. So I'm going to go, I'm reaching for my own belt to go like take it off. But as I'm going to do it, I couldn't do it. I couldn't move my arms because my whole, my whole scapula was, was shattered. My whole left shoulder was completely dusted. I couldn't move anything. So as soon as that happened to me, where I felt like I couldn't do anything for myself at that point, I was broken off. There was no one around me. And this is not an area that people are walking around. This is just a, a, like, this is an area that people live. You know, these are housing tracks. So to see anybody is very rare. So yeah. it just so happened that there was this guy that was on a little electric bike and he's wearing pants that he hasn't, he hasn't worn pants apparently for like 20 years. And he gets a pair of pants, ironically, that day. And um, they were too big for him. So that evening he put on a pair, he put on a, a, a belt. So as he went out and to go test ride his new bicycle, his little electric bike, I went flying by him when that happened. And so I'm looking down thinking I'm going to, I'm going to die. And he comes running up out of nowhere. I, I mean, it seemed like it took, it took a minute for him to get to me. Like it took a, it wasn't like he was right there on the scene. It took a minute. You know what I mean? Like it, yeah. it was rough. So I'm watching myself bleed out and I'm trying to tourniquet myself, but I can't even move. So that, that frustration is gnarly. And I'm going, oh my God, I, I'm, I'm going to die. So then this guy comes running out out of nowhere, out of nowhere. And he pulls off his belt and he puts it around where my leg is completely chopped off. And he, he go, and I go, oh, dude, I'm going to die. I'm going to die. He goes, you ain't dying today. You ain't dying today. And he pulled back as hard as he could, pulling that thing and pushing his own leg against my the end of my leg where I'm bleeding out. He's pushing it as hard as I can. And I can feel every second of every bit of it. From the second I got hit, the second I got hit, I felt it right away. It wasn't like there was shock. It wasn't like I didn't feel it. It wasn't like, oh, it took a while to feel. No, it was instant. Like the bone was gone. The, you know, like it was completely mm. just gone. So at that moment, it was, it was rough. The, the, now the lady that hit me, she never even got out of the car. Whoa. She just stayed at the car and she didn't even look at me. She, you know, she just stayed in her car. She stayed at the wheel because she didn't know what to do because her house was right there. She was pulling into her house, housing track right there. She had nowhere to run. Where are you going to run to? So she just sat there. She didn't know what to do. She was totally in shock, I'm guessing, because she never came out to check up on me, see how I was going to do. She was going to let me bleed out. You know what I mean? Whoa. So, bro, that's a lot to unpack right there. Oh, oh, okay. So, you said that whenever he put his belt around your leg and mm -hmm. he went to, you know, tourniquet your leg, I remember you said that you had blood squirting out your leg. When yeah. he does that, does the blood stop squirting out your leg? Uh, it, it stops like maybe like 80%. So and he's pulling as hard as he. I mean, this is a full-grown. This is this is like a six-foot yeah. man, that's that's pulling yeah. as hard as he can, you know, to try to chop off that like to to stop the bleeding. Yeah, that all that blood that blood flow down. Dude, to the, I mean, because it really so that, was coming. That, out, that I mean, it was not an exaggeration. I mean, it was really coming out like a freaking hose, you know, like a garden hose. You know, just pouring, guzzling, and and I'm sitting there going, dude, I'm 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 gonna I'm gonna lose it here, you know. And it wasn't like I was like, oh yeah, I'm gonna make it, blah blah blah. No, I was like, no, I'm at least I died doing what I loved. You know what I mean? Damn. So, but the honest truth is, is what my mind went through at that moment. It wasn't 
what you would kind of think it was. It was, it was different. Like I looked down at myself and the very first thing that like popped into my head, aside from assessing the situation was if I survive this, if I survive it, then I'm going to have to accept it now. And that's exactly what I did. I just decided, you know what, from here on out, I'm just going to accept it. So when I woke up 24 hours later, I woke up in the hospital after the first of four surgeries. And after the first one, I woke up and I was all smiles because I had just lived through that. I just lived through every bit of what I just told you. I felt every bit of it. I, and you know what I mean? Like even we didn't even talk about the ambulance yet. Like when I got put into the ambulance, like these guys, I'm, ta I'm talking to them and they're shoving, you know, doses of fentanyl and it, it, they're feeling like water. They're putting it in me and I'm looking at them going, that's it. Like I, I there's no pain reduction, you know, there's zero. And, and I'm okay, like, just so knock me out. You know what I mean? Like it was okay, crazy. So during this whole ordeal, how would you, how, how would you classify the pain? Thousand out of 10. Like I, I, I honestly say this and People say, like, you never know what your body can handle until you deal with it or go through it. I don't know, but I always say this. I feel like if I had even just 1% more pain, my, my body would have been full fatality just from the pain. And where – okay, so during this, whole, during this whole accident, your leg gets severed off. Where it was severed, severed off from at? the second. Oh, the, the pain is, well, mainly at my leg. You know what I mean? Like, that's where precisely, like, the, the main amount of, like, focus was. But at the same time, my back is all messed up. I mean, I shattered my in, entire scapula. And so this, this whole shoulder is a big, uh, big, um, what do they call it? One of those big plates. And it's and got it's like six. Plate. Yeah. And it's got like six, five inch screws. So, and, and it's permanent. And believe it or not, I have no limitations. I can lift weights. I can do anything. And it's crazy how, I mean, as of tomorrow, March 6th is my anniversary, we call it in the amputee world. But like, I lost my leg two years tomorrow. Okay, so since you mentioned that day, how does that day feel for you? Is it like an extra life day for you, or how would you um, how would you say that you look at that day? I'm gonna be honest. For me, it it, it I look at it as a day of no riding. First of all, <laughs> let me just say that that's the one day I don't ride out of the year, no matter what. Okay. I ain't going to ride a motorcycle on March 6th. Okay. But <laughs> that's kind of the only rule I put on it. But uh, aside from that, like, I didn't worry too much about it. Like, for me, it was like I made it a year. You know what I mean? And it was a good feeling. And, mm -hmm. like, for my mom, it was different. Like, for my mom, it was harder on her, ironically. It wasn't, it wasn't so hard on me. It was harder on my parents, you know? So that that's for them. It, it like reminded them of the trauma of what they had to experience because the trauma didn't let, just start or end with me. It went through my entire family. I mean, it trickles down, right? You know what I mean? It does. So it, it everyone in your does. world, it's going to change everyone's world. I mean, your accident, I guarantee you, changed everyone's world. You know, within your world. So mm -hmm. it, it did the true. same to me. It should it, look. It affects. It affects everybody. You know, it does. Everybody. It, it's all your family members, like your immediate family. It it truly affects everybody. Facts. Big yeah. facts. So, okay. So, I, I know at the beginning of your accident, you said that when she hit you, you went flying. How far would you say that you went flying? At least 100 feet. At least. At least 100 feet. Okay, so... Because, because you guys think you. I'm riding... I'm riding about 50 miles per hour, right? 
you know, and you got to think that's about this. That's the normal street, you know, 45, yeah. 50, you know, I'm riding about 50 and she, but then she collides into me, T-bones me exactly at 80 miles per hour. You can only think yeah. that as she makes that turn, I'm going to go like this and then go flying like that. Just yeah. nonstop. And, it, and that's okay. what I did. My, the first thing that, that hit was my helmet. Luckily I was wearing a freaking helmet. And Shout that's out what to, I was about to ask. Was you know you what I mean? Helmet? Thank God I was wearing a helmet because I was wearing a full face and um, okay. I decided to buy one's cry once on that. And thank God I did because literally it saved my life. Um, but that's what, that's the difference between a $1,200 helmet and a hundred dollar helmet. You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. that's definitely the difference is, is being able to save your own life with it. But my head hit the concrete or the curb first. That was the first thing, the red curb what? that everyone sees for the firefighters, you know? That's yeah. what the first thing that my head hit. And then I tumbled, and then I continued to tumble. And then so, yeah, that's where that's why I keep the helmet. I, I actually have the helmet to this day. Um, yeah, so I keep it. You know what I mean? Can you show, and, can you show us? I can, but it's can it's definitely in, it's in, it's in the garage. But oh, oh, you know, okay. I, I it, and I fine. also have I also have footage of it uh, that I can give you later, and okay. um, and also like my like the, the the motorcycle vest that I, I went down on, I still have the original one. You know what I mean? Like that's you'll see the blood on the on the patches and everything, and yeah, it's it's kind of gnarly. Yeah, how does looking at that that stuff make you feel? Honestly, it's like I look at it as like a. Uh, like a warrior badge almost. Like I look at that as like, that's the work I put in. That's the work I put into this culture. This is what I did. You know, like these are the steps that I made and these were all my decisions, you know, but Mm -hmm. I, I was righteous. I, I moved different within the scene and I tried to, to be a positive rather than a negative, you know, you know, one thing that I wanted to ask too is that normally when I do see somebody ride riding a Harley Davidson, I don't normally see them wear like a full helmet. Yeah, you'll see them doing the half dome. The hat, yeah, like the half yeah. helmet. So, what made you decide to rock the full helmet versus the half he- versus the half? It, helmet? It's really, it's really got to be because I think first of all, my dad was. Let's just say that no parent is going to be stoked on their son riding a motorcycle. I'm going to tell you that. I don't care what anybody says, unless you grew up in a motorcycle family. Like, like my, like if my dad rode Harleys, it'd be different. But like he doesn't. You know what I mean? He doesn't ride motorcycles like that. He rode, he ride dirt dirt bikes with me as a kid. You know, he he wasn't into Harleys and stuff. That's a whole different culture. You know. So to him, it was scary. So he's like, dude, like, just at least make sure you you have a good helmet. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. And and for me, I never cared about the look like that. Like, and to me, it kind of looks slick, anyways. You know, I had a good yeah, looking helmet, anyways. You know, but on they they always say because the Harley boys, you know what I mean? Like those Harley guys, they always got the half dome. Believe it or not, it's it's a big change now that you're seeing that there's a lot of less people doing the half dome. You know, it's at least here where I live, you know, a lot, a lot of people have switched over to the full face because of that. And would you say it's mainly because of safety or would you say it's because how it's a thousand percent because of safety? Actually, I have a investigator who uh, works closely with a law firm and they um, actually made a system because of me uh, that they will trade in anybody's half helmet. Anybody that has a half helmet can trade it in and get any full face they want of their pick. What? So they're trading their, you know, they're, so so they're trading in their $150 helmet for a $1,000 helmet. You know what I mean? Yeah. And these, these the, they're Same putting up the money to do it. You know what I mean? So yeah. it, was, it was pretty, uh, you know, it was pretty amazing to see them That's do cool. that. You know, cool. and what's that organization called? It's Black Widow. Black, Black Widow. Widow? Yeah, that's dope. That's that's dope, man. That's helping save. That's helping save 
Lots of lives. Yeah, I mean, and, and it's it's amazing. It's I, I, to be honest, I don't know if they still do it to this day. You know, uh, I hope they do, but that's something that that they did at least for uh, the the long while that I was around, and and I I see them do it all the time. I used to see them do it all the mm-hmm. time. They're not really too much in the scene anymore like that. Yeah. But yeah, they still okay. do help the community. Okay, now. Now, prior to this incident, have you ever went down on your bike before this? Um, yes. Yes. So I have, I think every person that has been on a motorcycle has dumped their bike. You know what I mean? Okay. There's a difference between an accident and dumping your mm-hmm. bike. You know, okay. um, you know, when you're first learning, especially when these these motorcycles, are, they're, they're heavy things. They're, they're, they're 700 pounds, you know, you're moving these things around. And um, they're just heavy heavy pieces of machinery. It's just different, you know? So when you're, when you're like, first learning how to, like, back them up and first learning how to dr- come out of the driveway backwards and, dude, they're, they're so heavy that, that as soon as it starts to tip, if you don't catch it at that second, you're going down. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's, it's heavy and you can crush your own self. I mean, think about it. 700 pounds laying on top of you, you know? Yeah. It's going to, it's going to be heavy. So, but I've, I had that happen a few times, you know, I dropped my bike in a, for instance, I dropped my bike going into a, a, a gas station. As I was coming in, there was a little wet spot and I kind of, you know, went through in first gear, didn't think anything of it. And all of a sudden, wham, the whole bike slid out of me. And I, I'm i sitting there going, oh, my God, I, I didn't even see that coming. You know what I mean? So it's kind of crazy. It, it, accidents can happen like that. But it's like, mm-hmm. I should have saw that. But it, it was late at night. It was like yeah. 3 o'clock at night at, in the morning when that happened. Mm-hmm. Okay. So and, and then at the time of your accident, what time of the day was this? This was 4.30 p.m. 4.30 p.m. Four, four, it was like 4.15 when the actual happened, like incident happened. Like yeah. 4 or 4.15. And then, uh, yeah, yeah, it was about 4.15, 4, 4.30, something like that. And do you know... Midday. Do you know what, like, her alcohol limit was? I mean, like, her alcohol... Like, you know, the, the, was? The, the, the problem is, is the... Within at least the the department that dealt with my case, I would say heavily reducted the police report. You know what I mean? And definitely didn't do their due diligence, you know? And um, I think there's a lot of people that go through accidents that can relate to this, Mm -hmm. you know? And it sucks. You know, I wouldn't wish that on anybody. But, yeah. Okay. Now, put me back on track on here. What happened? I said put me back on track on that one. Yeah. Okay. Now, whenever you do finally get to the hospital, what are they saying? Like, are they thinking that they can attach your leg back or? Oh, no. Uh, no. The, the are leg you hoping is. that it's a possibility? No. Or? No. It, it's not even a thought in our mind because the leg is completely gone. So it's not like they can grab. It, and it's not like the. The leg came off completely, and then it's just like, oh, yeah, it's over here now. It went into multiple see, pieces. That's what I was thinking. It went, it, it, I mean, it shredded. Like, my shoe had its foot in it, you know, like, it had, you know, it, it was all sorts of, yeah. That's where all the wet spots around the shoe is. That's, that's like my body fluid. Okay. Okay, so I, okay, so me personally... Like, I'm pretty sure me and everybody out there watching that they probably thought whenever you got hit, your leg went some way and then you went the other way. But right. it wasn't like that. When no. you got hit, your leg got severed, but the second, it just the shattered second into yep. thousands of pieces. Yep. Yep. Gone. Just gone. You know what I mean? And that was that was the, the, the hard thing that, you know, during my surgery process was... They had to reamputate me three or two different times because they didn't cut low or high enough. You know what I mean? Because they want to cut as low as they can. They want to cut as low as they can 
because the more leg you have, the stronger you'll be, the, the more prosthetics you can wear, different stuff like that. So, but anyways, when you get reamputated like that and they go in for adjustments and cleaning and all that, you're going through the pain again. It's, it's happening all over again. So you're going through the exact same pain that you just went through three times fold. I mean, I have to believe that they're putting you to sleep though, right? They're putting me to sleep every time I'm going to surgery, but I'm waking up doing that recovery and it's terrible. Okay, so every time that they tell you that, okay, look, we didn't cut high enough. Every time that they tell you that, like, what is going through your mindset? Well, like, they're, they they're tell telling you, me you I've got more your leg off. Well, they're telling me that I've got rocks that went like asphalt that went rocks oh. that went into my leg and all the way up into my kneecap. So I had asphalt all the way up to my kneecap. Yo. So it went all the way through, and so it, they they went in for cleanings, they went in for reamputations, mm. um, because uh, not only your, see here's the thing like a lot of ninety nine percent of amputees get amputated at the at the board, you know what I mean? And what I mean by that is by like literally the surgery bed, you know, you you get cut professionally by a doctor by a surgeon. That does it, and then they, 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 what they kind of do, it's almost like they spot weld the ends of the nerves, you know what I mean? They kind of help the nerves. By the time I got there, my nerves are dead, you know what I mean? So it's a different situation for me, okay. you know? So as they're like chopping, they're, they're figuring out that I'm my blood and, and my leg there is dying. So they're chopping, chopping, you know what I mean? And they're cleaning at the same time, yeah. trying to get me to the point where I'm clean. And they, at the same time, out of all these surgeries, I've got this wound vac. I'm sure many people know what a mm-hmm. wound vac is. And it's at the end of my leg. And so I'm internally bleeding and externally bleeding at the same time. You know what I mean? And so I have multiple problems and uh, just messed up problems within the, the, the hospital. You know, I had like over 20 um, blood transfusions, emergency blood transfusions to keep me alive. Um, you know, there was, multi- there, there was deaths involved, you know, where I actually came back. You know, like, it was hard. It was a hard time. But at the same time, I was like, I, and you got to think, this is in the middle, right smack in the middle of COVID. March 6th of 2021. Think of about th- that time of year. There was nobody, including my parents, couldn't even come inside the hospital and see me. So I'm there by myself. Having to go through all that by yourself. 26 days. And so I fought many times to get like, because I had brothers from the motorcycle club that wanted to visit. I had friends, family, you know, I'm obviously my mom and dad, you know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. and I'm fighting these guys to get, let them in. And I mean, I got the, I got a, like, I got three in-person visits, you know what I mean? And that I was able to sneak in that like, like I like told the charge nurse, like you, you better allow my, me to see my parents, dude, after this, like you better allow them to come in. And I fought them on it. Cause I was like, this is ridiculous, dude. Like all because of COVID, Get real. Look at what's going on with me. You know what I mean? Sorry. Let me see my parents. Yeah, man. Whenever I talk to anybody who had any type of incident happen during COVID. It's a nightmare. I I couldn't imagine what going through something traumatic like that alone would feel like. Yeah. Mentally. But see, you know what was weird is, is though I was like there alone. My job prior to this almost prepared me for this because I was in complete isolation. Mm. 21 days out at sea and then 21 days off. So I'd be completely by myself, isolated. So I was okay being by myself. So I knew how to communicate with my phone. 
you know what I mean? FaceTime, you know, and, and yeah. see this, I found the good rather than sat there and, 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 and just be like sad about it. You know, I was like, man, if, if they're not gonna allow me to do that, then I'm, then I'm still going to FaceTime, still going to call, I'm still going to text, you know, dude, I had thousands of like, it seemed like calls and text messages. It was like, I couldn't even keep up with, you know, it was almost, a, it was a blessing really, you know, to have that many people care about you. It was like, wow, this is this is some support that I've never seen, you know, a next level support. Okay. So, so after you done getting the surgeries and everything, and now it's time for you to try on your first Leg. prosthesis. Yeah, yeah, prosthesis. Yeah how how long was that? You know, how long how long did it take for that to happen since the time you came into the hospital? How long was it until so you tried on your it, first prosthesis? So it goes, it's different for amputees across the world. And okay. some people like, I know for instance, like I was watching a, a, an amputee little show this morning, this guy, uh, he's been amputated for two years and he's just getting his leg. You know what I mean? Oh. And there, there's, there can be a lot of reasons for that. There can be a lot of complications okay. with people's legs mm, during those okay. times. Um, luckily I didn't have those kind of complications though. I have okay. chronic nerve pain. Um, yeah. I, I, I'm able to still get around that and still be able to deal with day-to-day -day life fine now, you know? So it took me to get to the leg, the very first leg where I'm healed up enough to walk in it was yeah. right at the two month mark. So 30 days out of the hospital, I, I get my leg and I cannot help myself. I get home. I sit on my motorcycle. I start the motherfucker and I go. What? I was, you know what? I was actually going to ask you too. How long did it take for you to get back on your bike after having your leg? It was two months. It was, it, was when I got, it was when I got my two first. Months? So it wasn't even my first actual, like, see how this is a, an actual like carbon fiber leg. Yeah. You know what I mean? The, at the time they gave me what is known as a test socket. So okay. they're just testing to see if it's, if it's a, an okay fit. So you wear it for like two days, three days up to a week. You know okay. what I mean? And you wear it I mean, sometimes even longer, you know, depending, <clears throat> but um, they just, <clears throat> and then once you, you give them the thumbs up and you go, okay, this is, this is what feels good. Then they mm -hmm. take that model and then they make it into the permanent. Mm, you know okay. what I mean? So they gave me my 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 test socket and I couldn't help myself. I just hop on the motorcycle and went. <laughs> couldn't help it. Did you have any like any fears or anything? Any like Zero. you know, PTSD? Zero. No, no I'm 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 riding on the I'm riding on the streets again and everything. Mm. Yeah. Okay, so whatever happened to the lady that hit you? Unfortunately, ever, you know, like, did she go to the jail or, or anything? So she was, I believe, th this is where I kind of lose a lot of information. And this, I don't know if she's connected or what the, I, I, I can't make any assumptions here. You know what I mean? I really can't. Yeah. But I know that she didn't do any time. And I know that she was held like for like 24 hours and then let go. She got her car fixed. She got her car fixed before I got out of the hospital. Like completely fixed. God. It was completely fixed before I got out of the hospital. How does that happen? Ooh, that's, yeah, I'm, yeah. I, w I, I, would, I would be an angry person here or some shit like that. Yeah, it's rough. It's definitely rough. It is. But it was something that I accepted, you know, right away. It was just, okay, move on. Ooh. That's tough. So, whenever you finally do kind of get out of the hospital and everything, I know you said it took you two months for you to get your, what you would call your First leg in, right? test. Well, uh, well, it, it, that was the, the, when they got my test socket. So when I got okay. my permanent leg, it was at the like three month mark. Okay. So, like, so this whole time, how are you moving around? 
I'm using wheelchairs. Um, oh. So I was in, I was in a wheelchair the whole time. You know, for, for the most part. Yeah. Yeah. Mm, you know what? But now it kind of makes sense though. It, it 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 makes sense because crutches are damn near impossible to walk. Oh no! Like forget the crutches. Days. Yeah. Forget the so, crutches. No, I'm not so, doing that. Like the walkers, I would do the walkers, yeah. so I'd have to hop one foot, you know, at a time. And so that's yeah. th- those are the things that like we do, you know, uh, in the community. We, t- we you're not supposed to do it. Like doctors will tell you, you're not supposed to hop as an amputee, but we still yeah. do it, you know. Um, but if you do land on it, you can mess yourself up and get yourself reamputated. You right. know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, if you fall at the end of it and and mess it up too much, they can reamputate you. Yeah. There's so there's always a fear of like you're gonna lose more. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Now, you know, as you get out the hospital and now you're transitioning to life without your left leg. How is that transition for you? Like, how would you say it was mentally and physically? Because not only do you have to deal with this physically, now it's mentally as well. Yeah. So how was that? transition you know now now that you have to move through life without your left leg no that's a great question i was met outside the hospital i came out april 2nd was my discharge date i think everyone remembers her discharge date you know what i mean Mm -hmm. um so i was discharged uh the second and i was met with the entire club right out front the hospital and they all were riding their motorcycles and they swamped around. I got into the car and then the whole club swarmed my car as my mom and dad are driving. And they're shutting down traffic and literally running lights to get me home. It was insane. I, it was it was one of the coolest experiences of all time. Yeah, it was cool. That sounds cool. Yeah, it was it was hectic, but it was it was awesome. Yeah. So when you finally get home, do you would you say that you feel you feel the whole like 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 do you feel those emotions come to you when you finally get home? Because now you're going well, to a place that's kind of home used to be familiar, yeah. but now it's not it's as familiar because now you got this injury to where you know adjusting back isn't the same. No, you're so, right. So and does I know your you, house feel like a home or does it feel like, you know, does it feel like odd or it, like, like, how does that feel like readjusting? You know, I, I was met with nothing but love from my parents and um, yeah. they, they made it loving and accepting and mm-hmm. um, did their best to help me in any, any case they could. Um, you know, obviously there for a while I couldn't go upstairs, which is where my room was, unless I, you know, got on my back and I and I crawled up backwards, I could do that, you know. Mm. I ended up doing that for a little bit. But what I what I did is my before I came home, my parents had set up a, a an area in the in the main living room okay. was now my area to recover. You know what I mean? Because I, I have an open wound at the end of my leg. So I have to deal with that. So yeah. Uh, I had to recover from that. And you just have to go through the process of just recovering and sitting there. And what that's where I believe it or not, where I found your channel and where I found a lot of, a lot of, you know, yeah, this is, this is how it all fully comes in circle is um, that's how, you know, injuries like this can bring us so close together. They can bring people that you would never expect or never have. You, you're 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 meeting them for like either a reason or a season, and and you really get to meet some of the coolest people sometimes. Damn. So, <clears throat> ooh, that was that was deep. So, I know you said that you was in recovery. How long did you, how long does the actual re- recovery take for you though? Like, because I've never I. I don't know anything ab- about this right. injury. So yeah, how long this injury does it take it's, your it's, actual it's, leg it's different. To heal? It's different because I also have a shoulder that's healing too. You know what I mean? Because I had I, that whole surgery. Oh, we totally forgot all about that. See, because everyone everyone instantly goes to the leg, and it always has been that way since day one. And it's it's like, yep, you know, like 
that everyone forgets about that. I, I couldn't even move my left arm, you know? So yeah, it was rad. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Damn. Okay. So how, Wait. how long does it take for both injuries? All of that. Help? Yeah. Um, it took, it took, I would say, it's almost like I'm almost still healing. I stay, you know, it's like a pain that I still deal with all the time, but it's like the wounds itself healed up. I would say within three to four months, you know, where I was like totally like healed in that sense where I was able to walk and have not the extreme amount of pain that I was having. Like people, I I had such an extreme amount of pain, but I didn't care. I was like, I'm still going to walk, but I'm walking with a cane, dude, with Mm -hmm. the test socket, you know? Yeah. Because I'm like, I don't care. Like, I'm not going to let this, I'm, you know, it's so much pain, but I don't care. I have to walk, you know? It was, it was weird because I was like, I need to be able to ride. I'd rather be able to ride again than be able to even walk. I even said that to a nurse, you know what I mean? And they're like, you're crazy, dude. You're crazy. And I'm like, no, dude, like I have to. I have to be on a motorcycle, you know. I have to. Man, I don't. I don't know. I don't know if I would have been able to get back on a motorcycle, let alone get back on one. You know, within two to three months after my injury. Yeah. That's no, I, I. I don't. I, feel, I, I don't. Feel like you would have listen, some level of PTSD or something. It's weird because I. I don't have any weird uh, effect like that. I. I yeah. It's like that PMA thing, like positive mental attitude that, you know, I just took it and embraced it and was like, you know, and, and, and listen, man, I don't, just because I hopped on a motorcycle in two months doesn't mean you should, you should follow your own body. You know what I mean? You should, you shouldn't be pushed by anybody else or what I do or any other influencer does. You know what I mean? Um, don't push yourself like that, but I did it when I was ready. You know, and um, that's what I would I'm advise. Sure it was a way of therapy for you as well, though. A thousand percent, you know, you, thousand percent. Just getting back on. I know you felt more comfortable. So I'm, bro. Honestly, I'm pretty sure getting back on the motorcycle probably helped heal you a lot faster than yep. if you wasn't on it. It's just well, it's that, shocking to well, me knowing that you got back on it after something devastating, something so dramatic, like this. This, yes, and devastating, traumatic, yes, bro. This gnarly, is, all of it. You know. Yeah, bro. I get is, it. And this and, is and, next and, level and that's right here. and that's what that's what changed a lot because the club at the time when they saw me get back on a motorcycle they're like no way. Now you got to remember at the time we were in 15 countries. Um so <laughs> the and main when you say 15 countries what does that mean? There which means the club is in like they're, they have chapters all within different countries, you know, Japan or mm. whatever, you know, it could be uh, England, it could be, you know, anywhere, you know. But anyways, the the main, the headquarters of this, you know, the HQ of this particular club that I was in yeah. uh, was in Brazil. So um, they flew me down because they saw that I got back on my bike. And we got onto a hashtag never give up run. And it was our one pack, one club. And we set a double world record. Guinness Book of World Records flew out. We had, I think it was 6,546 motorcycles or something like that. Or the Mm -hmm. opposite, 6,456 motorcycles. Something like that. And those are just the registered motorcycles. Those aren't the ones that Mm -hmm. just came in and started packing in, you know? Yeah. So... That was a, a life altering moment as well, going down into Brazil and experiencing riding in front of a pack and setting a world record with 6,000 people plus behind you. And uh, how long, how long was this ride or this journey that you Six took? hours. We went, no, we no, went no, from no, st- no, 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 but how long was it after? Like, okay, so you mm. get out of the hospital. When is this March, ride take right, place? Right, right, so, so I get out of the hospital April 2nd. When I go fly to to, uh, to Sao Paulo, Brazil, that is yeah. July, like, July 16th of 2021. That same year? Yeah, it was, like, a couple months later. It was, it was four, four, three, four months after the accident. 
And we set the double world record in Sao Paulo, Brazil. Uh, we rode from Sao Paulo, and we rode all the way up to Rio de, de Janeiro. You know, Rio. It was pretty crazy, bro. That's crazy. That yeah, that's, <laughs> bro. That's amazing, right there. That having oh. support like that, like, see, this is where like that's I kind of get confused. Uh, you know what I mean? Is like, I'm glad it happened to me almost rather than someone else. Because I almost feel like maybe that other person wouldn't have had that support. You know what I mean? And for me, I was able to handle it. I was able to, you know, and seeing that kind of and receiving that kind of love is insane. I think it would shock anybody. Ooh. Just meeting, just them meeting us at the airport. They showed up in the hundreds. Just to, just to get us from the airport, just to receive us. Insane. People people drove the people were riding their motorcycles to get my national president a special bottle of alcohol that he likes, but it, he has to drive an entire or ride his motorcycle six hours to another state in Brazil, ride there, get it, and then ride six hours back and meet us at the airport just in time to give it to him. That's great. Like Twelve hours of riding a motorcycle just to get a just like that's dedication. Yeah, that just that's shows how thing. united y'all y'all are. That's crazy wow. though, huh? That's it's wild. Yeah, that is. That is. Yeah, it's wild. Okay, okay, because you know it seems like you got back out there really quick. Yeah, but I want to know: I was there any apprehension of getting back out there like too quick for you? Like, like did you feel some type of way going back out there in society? With an amputated leg now. No. Now, so this, I love that you asked this question. Um, I think I've worn pants one time since I've been amputated. I wear shorts every single day because what? it's a badge of honor. I, I choose not to hide it at all. I pick up my little girl with it. I go to her schools with it. I don't care. I go everybody and everybody and everybody. I don't care about the looks. I don't care about the stares. I, I have never cared about what anybody's got to say or, you know what I mean? It, unless it's cool. Most people, 99% of the time, I get good reactions. You know what I mean? So it's like, I I don't That's even care. Cool. You know, I okay, wear it so with pride. Do, do, do you feel like, do you feel like you get the lookers? Like people just be eyeballing you? Oh, absolutely. I Dude, not only just people, but like I've had a little kid. Like I've had a, a strange incident happen. Bro, kids are the but, worst. But it came up to me. Worst. It came up to me. And we're in like at Ross or something. You know what I mean? And and yeah. kid comes up to me and and he's like this close from my leg. I'm I'm hanging out on the shopping cart with my phone. Yeah. And this kid comes this close and he's pointing and he's like this close to my leg and he's just pointing at it. Oh yeah. And he's just that, like, me. And I'm like, uh, excuse me. You know what I mean? Like. Hello there. Like, what's up, bro? Like, bro, yeah, I'm half a robot, man. Worst. Bro, <laughs> yeah. it, you know what, bro? They, you know, kids have no filter. No, they kids don't. don't know, kids, and, and, and like, dude, kids don't hilarious. know when they're being rude. None of that. So, dude. it's it's really just unfortunate. But I'm telling you, bro, a kid could really ruin your day. It's it's hilarious, they bro. They could like, say they, some they, wild they, stuff, they, bro. They, Kids there's a reason wild. why there's a reason why they made television shows you know the damnest yeah. the things that the damnest kids say or whatever you know oh, they say yeah bro and i'm probably say the damnest things will, you know bro they will stare they won't just look at you they will no, they'll do they'll do you. some weird yeah no it's it's yes. and, but it's not just that i mean it's really the adults i feel like and i feel like it's a lack yeah, of true. uh you know, I feel like the adults aren't aren't going like, hey, you know, don't be staring at people. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. you should be doing that to your children anyways, you know? Yeah. Um, I exactly. think, you know, uh, but like I say, I, I grew up on a different moral and ethic code that I cannot put everybody else on because if I do, I'm just going to get let down every time. So mm -hmm. that's what's hard. Yeah. And. I heard you say that you wear shorts every single day. So every single that day. That means that everybody can see that your leg is amputated. So do you do you feel like that people just come up to you and just ask you, hey, man, what happened to your leg all the time? And it, and it just be the rudest, mm. the rudest thing. Or like, how do you feel? How do you feel that that? I would say I most say affects people. you, but. 
I think most people are pretty good. You know, I think that, you know, uh, the most common is just like, Hey, you know, like you, I didn't even notice when you walked in, but like, that's crazy that you didn't like, like the, no one even noticed. Like, you know for instance, it kind of blends in with what you're wearing right now. So, so do you wear a lot of black? Yeah, I mean, I, I generally wear a lot of black. I mean, I usually okay. Have. So it bl- it blends in. And, well, I mean, and, that's what's okay. cool about getting legs is you can you can get legs built a certain way, and that's why I got mine built carbon fiber. You know what I mean? Because mm, I like that style. Okay. You know. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. but anyways, it was it was more of the way I was wearing it rather than than uh, that. You know what I mean? With it yeah. blending. It was more like, for instance, like I went to, I was doing, um, where I went, I met up with these guys in Hollywood and these are, these are very well-known people in Hollywood that do many skits and stuff like that on many movies yeah. and stuff. And I show up and we're all sitting there and talking and uh, networking and, and filming and doing all this stuff. And all of a sudden I have the guy next to me go, holy crap, dude. We've been here for like four hours and no one has noticed that you are amputated. And I look at him, I go, yeah. He goes, that's crazy. Like nobody noticed. Like, and then, and then he like stopped the room. He like literally stopped the room. He goes, guys, Hey, did anybody ever fucking notice this? You know what I mean? Like, did anybody see this? Like, that's crazy. Like, no, like he never okay. said anything. It was like he didn't come in walking in sense. like with a limp because like I walk like when I walk I if I wore pants you wouldn't be able to tell. You know what oh, I mean? You would oh, not be okay. able to tell. Oh, okay, so 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 you don't walk with a limp at all then? No. Uh. Uh-uh. Uh. Okay. Okay. It, now, it, sometimes now, I got a little gangster thing. It, 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 it does sometimes. It depends. Ooh, depends. Okay. It depends. Uh, you, you have your good days and you have your bad days. You know, um, there are days Is there that like a time limit. No, uh, no. I wear it. Kind of, I'm kind of blessed on being able to wear it for mo- most of the time. Okay. But when, when you, when, when you go down though, and, and you're, you're hurting though, it, it, that's the, the part that is unpredictable. You know, you'll be down and you, you have to lay down for X amount of time to like recover. Like, like I was telling you about like having a, a little bone spur, you know, yeah. I was, I was walking on a bone spur for, you know, six days and it really hurt. And just today mm. it, it finally felt better for me to walk around. So it's, it's like, I still deal with these things. And also I want to, uh, while we're on the topic of pain like this, mm. I want to let everyone know that to this day, I quit the opiates and the opioids in the hospital. So to this day, I don't, I choose not to use any of those, you know, drugs because I don't, I, even though I have chronic nerve pain, I'm not going to live on those things. I'm not going to live on, on pain meds. I'm, I've seen what it's done to my friends. I've seen what it's done to my family, you know? Um, and I know that I have an addictive personality, so I go all in on whatever I do. So I know, knowing that, why would I do it? That's why to this day, I've never even put anything up my nose. You know, I've been, dude, I'm, I'm the complete opposite of what people would think in a motorcycle club. You know what I mean? I've never even put anything up my nose. That's what's crazy. Like the worst I've ever done is, is quote unquote worst is marijuana. And for me, it's, that isn't a, a, like for me to like escape. It's not like I get high from it. All it does is it doesn't even take away the pain. It just allows me to focus on doing whatever else I'm doing. It allows me not to focus on the pain. It allows you to focus on whatever else. So it actually gets me amped up. It actually gets me creative. It actually makes me want to move, you know? So it's kind of different. Interesting. So would you say that there is a lot of... Would you say that there is a lot of pain associated with having an amputated leg? One thousand percent, yes, yes. Mm. You're, you're. If you're an amputee, you're going to deal with uh, pain for life. That's a thing that, unfortunately, is something that you have to accept. But and where do I you think, feel the pain at? Well, 
it you feel it at the end of the leg and then sometimes at the where your foot used to be i was going bro i was literally going to ask that question which is known as phantom pain or what people call ghost pains that. yes you know? okay so um, so how would you classify phantom pain out there for people who don't know classifying it well first of all it's a type of nerve pain yeah um but what it is is Obviously, my leg is chopped off, right? You know, right yeah. here. So, down below it, obviously, it's all carbon fiber. It's yeah. metal, titanium, stuff like that, right? But mm-hmm. for some reason, the mind is so powerful that it can feel like your leg or your foot is still there. So, like, for instance, I'm going to wiggle my toes right now. I'm literally going like this with my left toes right now. And I have no left toes, obviously, right? <laughs> but I'm I'm literally going back and forth with my mind. I can feel the, the, the muscles, the nerves, and everything down there. What? Yes. That's crazy. So, so what's crazier about it is that... I'll get pains. Now, phantom pain is, is excruciating. It's so bad that people... Um, people like literally cannot move. They, um, it, it's terrible. It's terrible. So if, like, I'll give you a, for instance of some of the phantom pain that I've had, okay. I, I'll feel like my non foot that's there in between my big toe and my, you know, the, the toe ne- next to it. Mm-hmm. I, I'll feel like there's a piece of paper that is just going back and forth, cutting in between it. Mm. <clears throat> <clears throat> just going back and forth for some reason that's a pain that I feel all the time <clears throat> the other feeling is I'll feel a repeating jab of like a full on kitchen knife going through the bottom of my left foot like 15 16 times boom 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 and it'll happen for like two and a half minutes straight <clears throat> yeah so Ooh. that's what that's what phantom pain is You know, we think of these big things, but then there's also the small things too. Like you got to think like, even though, yeah, I can stand, I can do, I can run or walk, all these Mm -hmm. things. You got to think like, it's the small things that, that throw people off too. It's like that, that will, that will upset people and get people Mm -hmm. off on their mind is for instance, I have to use a shower chair for the rest of my life. I'm okay with that. You know what I mean? That was part of me accepting my whole thing. You know what I mean? Because I, though I didn't think about having to use a shower chair ever again Mm. or never needing to, because I've always never needed to, right? I've had two legs. All of a sudden you can't, you you can't wear this leg in in the, in in the shower. Can't, you know what I mean? You got to clean yourself. Question too. Okay. So you can't, okay. So you have to take it off. Yes. Now there are shower, there are shower legs, but I'm going to tell you this. Nobody gets them. Nobody in the amputee community gets a shower leg. You know, you may have one guy in a comment that may say that he's got a shower leg. You know what I mean? Yeah. Is it because they're expensive or is it because they're Always. uncomfortable or? It's, it's, it's uncomfortable. It's first of all, uncomfortable. Uh, second of all, it's not, in, it's not uh, covered in, by insurance. So you usually got to oh pay for God. it out of pocket. You know what I mean? So you only okay. get one leg every three years. By your insurance what? all across the United States, throughout all the insurance, uh, at least in the United States, you get one leg okay. every three years. Okay. And you know what? That leads me to my next question, too, is how much does it cost for a prosthetic leg? Well, there's it depends on how how <laughs> it depends how crazy you want to go with it, because you can really go next level, you know, and get to that high uh Quality, uh, there's different grades, man. There's different, but it's what just you like mean anything. By, like, okay, when you say go crazy with it, like, what do you mean, though? Well, like, for like, instance, what are you like, adding to it, I'm, what are I'm, you taking away? Like, like what? Like, what do you you mean? could be adding, for instance, like a, like a, a hydraulic knee. Let's say you had a knee, like for me, I'm a below the knee, so I still have my knee, okay. right? But okay. for above the knee amputees who have to have a knee in order to walk, 
it's it's hydraulic and usually it just pushes out once it's let go but you can have ones that are battery operated and that will actually do the stuff for you so you can charge your leg and yeah so that's how people will do that for the above the knee amputees you know mm, and um that's a whole different about it like that yeah so it's a whole different thing so yeah it's wild whoa yeah, right. it, it, having your knee or not right. is, it is a big difference. Some type of hydro- hydraulics, you know, for when you walk in, like, I never, okay. Okay, so it just so happens that since you're a, since you're below the kneecap, right. it's just, it's a little bit better for you because. Personally, you yes, okay. because, because if. Yeah. There's a big, you know, thing like everyone goes like, oh, everyone's, you know, equal in the amputee community. And and I I agree with that. But I'm going to tell you that the above knee amputees deal with more problems than the uh, below knee, which is what I am. Um, They deal with more issues than we do. I feel like that people on the outside looking in that have nothing to do with it would classify that like, okay, one amputee, everybody is the same. But when you have to live it. And you it's know a whole different, a, yeah, whole different a whole experience. different experience. Exactly. And nobody, it's, it's nobody just, thinks of that. Nobody thinks of that. You know what exactly. I mean? People aren't going to that level of mm-hmm. like deepness on, on, on yeah. like thinking like, oh, what is he going through? You know, because exactly. we are really wrapped up in our own, in our own stuff. You know, I mean, yeah, respectfully, we all are. Yeah. Okay. Now, now when you say you can get it, you know, like it really depends on how crazy you want to go. When it comes to a prosthetic leg, right, right. how much do they cost? It's got to be, I would say, in the range about from $5,000 on the cheap okay. end. Okay. On the cheap end. You know, this is where, like, your insurance is covering half or bare something minimum. like that. or Bare minimum. Okay. Something like that. But, like, you you can go all the way up to, you know, $200,000, $300,000 legs. Two hundred, you know, you you can do you can do very very. There are very expensive systems out there, Two, you know, and oh, and, and I'm gonna, you know, it's, I mean, this is a whole system. I mean, even my leg, I'll show you right now. I'm gonna show you. Uh, basically, there's two different hoses. Every time I take a step, there's an actual uh, thing that squishes that pulls air out from the socket, from where my leg is, and it pulls air out, and it. And it grabs a hold of me by a suction. So I'm going to show you. Mm. So this is a real sophisticated system then. Oh. So this is, every time you take a step, this also moves 45 degrees each way. But every time I take a step, it pulls air out from in here. That's what the hose is for? Yep. And then it pulls it out mm. through there. That's and then crazy. this is a pin lock. So I also have a pin at the end of my leg here that's yeah. this long. So it pins, it goes into the actual leg so I can release it there. Mm. So instead of oh. putting it on the side where yeah. everyone puts them on the side, well, I told my prosthetic, my prosthesis, or, or uh, my doctor, I was telling him, I go, look, I need to be able to ride motorcycles. I can't have that thing on the side. I need it on the back. So they customized that for me. You know what I mean? Um, which was really nice. Mm, so, okay. um, but that was like, I had to really, really fight for the insurance on that, you know? And I had a doctor that was willing to fight their life on it because they saw my my ambition and was like, we're not going to let you, we're not going to let you fail. You know what I mean? That's like, good. we're, we're, we're going to cover the cost no matter what. Okay. All right. Now, for for that system that you just showed us right now, how much does that actual leg cost? Well, the, it depends also on where you're at in the country as well and where yeah, resources are. No I mean, California there's, ain't no joke. But these these are like hundred thousand dollar legs, you know what I mean? That they're they're not cheap. Yeah. They're they're not and they're they're not something that is um just easily obtainable. That's why they're yeah. they only give you one every three years. And at the same time, you usually for most amputees they start on the low end and and then have to work their way up to get the high end shit later you know what i mean yeah. to where so you're a little bit more responsible when it comes to it cuz yes 
I'm guessing I'm guessing since you do put a lot of wear and tear on the actual leg, I'm pretty sure that you kind of go through them kind of frequently then. You would so, think. So so is is three years enough time Absolutely for not. that leg? Absolutely not. So, okay, so I, I'll tell you I'll tell you what happens is the leg okay. the leg the, even on my situation or anybody else that goes through an amputation yeah. What very first happens is her leg is swollen. So mm, okay. it, it's got a t- it takes months for that swellingness to come down. So yeah. when you're getting casted and molded, you're, you're, you're swollen at the time. So when you get that test socket, it might work for the first two, three, four days. But then all of a sudden, the, the second week goes around and you could barely walk on it. You know what I mean? And, and you're adding different layers okay. of socks to compensate because you have to... There's, there's things called socks and liners all within this leg. So, see, this is the liner oh, that goes to my okay. skin. These okay, are so three, it's layers. These are three ply layers of socks okay. to compensate for the, the swelling that went down. Because what oh. the more the more wear I put on it, the more yeah. like I like, more active I am, the more swellingness that goes down. So you got to compensate for that and put on these socks. You know what I mean? And so that's what kind of keeps you because um, yeah. you're not supposed to put all the weight at the end of the bottom of your nub or leg or yeah. or whatever you want to call it. Mm-hmm. Um, I know amputees get weird out on certain terms but putting the weight all the way at the bottom is obviously not what you want to do you want the whole leg to be grabbed at the same time so you can it feels like it's all one leg yeah well, you know okay like it's a part of you yeah okay so how long have you had that particular system right there this one let's see i fought for this one because i ended up the, the way they do it is they give you the 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 test socket then they give you this like intermediate kind of one to like make sure that it's like sure sure and then that's the mold they go for so it's a three-step process so i did that the three-step process and got my my normal leg the one that i had then i outgrew it where i i was at 19 layers of socks i just showed you six that's my that's normal right now now, according to the CDC or whatever they call it, the they, they say that if you're at nine plies, you need to get a new prosthetic leg. You need to get a new okay. socket, you know, because at nine plies, you're 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 limiting your ability to move. You your your knee can't bend as much. You know what I mean? It's different because the more you add, the the less that I can. I mean, look how much is bunched back here. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So okay. you got 19 plies of that of those socks. Imagine you couldn't even. I, my leg is stuck open. You know, you wouldn't even be able to bend it. Yeah. Okay. So whenever one when. All right. So how long have you actually had that one? Oh yeah. I'm sorry to not answer that. Um, oh no, you good, you I've good. had it for. Um, let's see. I got it about. Not even a year ago, maybe, maybe it's been a um, no, okay, almost a year. I would say almost okay. a year. Okay, so and I would say a year is enough time to really, you know, kind of test something out, learn things that you like about it and you don't like about it. Yes, What's but I definitely that you don't like about it. But the, the the problem with that was is I signed off too early, and this is something that I I definitely tell amputees: mm-hmm. do not sign off at the end until like, cause if you sign off, that's your insurance going, okay, we're paying for it. And that's it. You said it was okay. Now you can't come back and go, Hey, this is not working. No, you signed it off. You said it was comfortable. You said it was usable. You said everything. So do not sign that piece of paper. Don't feel rushed by your prosthetist or, or your doctor or anybody. You go at your speed and and you know your body when that swellingness is coming down. That's when you really want to start getting molded, so that you don't you avoid what I had to go through because I outgrew my leg by two and a half years. You know what I mean? 
So mm, okay. So that's basically how I how I look at it because it's every three years I outgrew it by two and a half years because it was only six months, you know, and then I got this leg. Okay. Now, we, say you want to step it up a little bit. Say say your insurance says, you know what, Mike, we got you. We're gonna throw we're gonna throw the whole bag at it. What's something more that you could do? To the actual leg, like, like if you want to go I know what to you the mean. very top, like tricked out, fully tricked out. Yeah. What else could be done? The the biggest thing that people like to do, aside from custom, just like looking custom, like some people like to have custom looking stuff. You know what I mean? Some okay. people even like the sticker look. You know, some some people. You know, people don't care. They just got their own little way. But the things that okay. aside from that that are actual functional that I could add personally yeah. it not for people that are above me, but for someone like yeah. me would be the foot. That's what you would upgrade is the foot itself. So the foot is a blade. Mm. It's a whole blade that goes into a foot shell. So the blade goes through here and it goes all the way up there. And then it, I've obviously got a heel that runs back. So there's a whole, sh there's a whole thing in there. So you could upgrade those different types of um, ankles and okay. different type of feet. That's okay. what people would upgrade. Mm, okay. Because you could just attach any type of foot to any socket. <sighs> yeah. You just put this right here. See, the, the end of my leg is here. You just attach whatever yeah. part of the leg I want. All right. Oh, oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah. That makes sense. Now, now, I know you haven't been with this injury for three years yet. Right. But what happens once you run the course of your actual leg and now you have to get a new one? What actually happens with the old one? Do you know? Yeah. So you keep it. it like, no, like, no, no. You, you keep along? it. It's yours. Yeah, okay. It's yours to keep. So I know a lot of people collect them. You know what I mean? Like okay. they'll just have like, like every leg they've ever had. Some people eBay yeah. them. You know what I mean? You can go on eBay or you can look on, yeah. on Facebook marketplace. You know what I mean? But like none of those I really recommend unless you're, you're, I mean, there are people that get them and they get deals and they work out and somehow they work out. But dude, I'm not going to wear anything that, I mean, really, unless it was like built for me, I'm not going to, you know, wear it. It's, you know what? It's kind of like, I don't know if you've ever gotten a used pair of shoes from somebody. Whenever yep, you get you a used pair of shoes, the sole to the actual shoe, like the inline, like the layer inside, it's already molded to their foot. To their so foot. Why, yeah, to their foot. So that's why when you wear it, like your feet start hurting. Think like like it's a it's way different because nope, it's not it's molded crazy. for your foot. So now it has to mold to your foot as well. And it's all it's all weird in the inside. Yeah, it's all wonky. Yeah, yeah, yeah it you're right. It, it don't feel right. It's, it's all weird. So I could I could definitely understand because even even when it comes to wheelchairs, your wheelchair is actually custom built for you. You know, so it's custom oh, wow. built for my height. See, see yeah. I didn't see I didn't my my level of that was um of wheelchair obviously because I knew it wasn't permanent. You know what I mean? I, I used a hospital wheelchair. I, I did. I, I did at first. I did at first, but then I actually did drop like twelve hundred bucks on a lightweight, like where I could oh. pull out the, the the wheels and stuff like that. You know, I could okay. put it and it collapses okay. and goes down, and I can wheel myself. You know, I got one of those, but yeah. I don't have anything professional like like those really crazy like wheelchairs like that you got. Like that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, because they, you know, like they have to measure you. Yeah, that's a everything. that's a specific measurement. I didn't get none of that. Mm, you know, definitely okay. not. Okay, okay, okay. I was asking because I was I was only wondering because I know I I do get a lot of you know people. Well, I I do get a lot of questions of people from other countries and stuff like that. Like they might ask right, me right, right, right. for old wheelchairs. So that's why I kind of asked because I feel like that. I feel like that. A used leg would be more easier to ship somewhere than a than a old right. wheelchair would be. You're right. Yeah, so that's because why I asked. It, it it would be a lot easier, and that's why people yeah. put them on eBay, you know, and and mm -hmm. and they really can ship them just in a box. Yeah. You know what I mean? Probably. How much do know? they weigh? 
Um, is it, it heavy was, or is it is it, it light? It, is it, it like kind of is weight? heavy. I think it's about oh, like okay, eighteen okay. pounds. I think it, oh, I think it's oh, it's a lot heavier than what I expected though. I'm, I probably I might, think I might like be, real I might light be, but durable. Man, I might be wrong, man. I'm I might okay. be thinking about the weight of the leg itself before like that that okay. amount of weight that I lost yeah. was eighteen pounds. I don't think that the leg itself is eighteen pounds, but it is it does feel heavy. I okay. but I can't answer that with certainty and know that because I might be on the complete opposite side of this, you know what I mean? I can't really remember. Okay. Now I do have to ask this question because I go through this problem. And I don't know if you would go through it, but I, I'm kind of curious. Sure. When it, com- it. when it comes to the airport, how is it going through it with the prosthetic leg? Okay. So every single time I am going to be, I, I automatically know I'm going to be put off to the side. I'm going to be scanned. And not only am I going to be scanned, but they're not going to do the personal one either. But they're also grabbing every single time. I don't know why, but they grab this weird thing. And they go all around my leg, and they put it for drugs. You know, they're putting it and testing it for. Or, or, is for that yep, is that what it is? Is that what it is? Explosives. Yep. I, and I see. I no, thought it was a drug thing, bro. They made me feel like a criminal every single time. That's it's crazy. Like they they check you. They check you for explosive residue. Like and I'm saying, going. It make no sense because one time I got hit with the explosive residue. Like one time when right. he was coming back from Louisiana. Um, oh, shit. I, it just so happens I was filming, right? Because I want, I want, bro, because w- w- when they pull you off to this, look, most of the time they don't pull you off to the side. All right. Most of the right. time they, they, they might pull you off to the side, but it's literally right there in front of everybody. So they checking you in front of everybody. Then they will oh, go man. ahead and take the little, it look like an alcohol wipe. And they do your hands. They do your yep. the tops of your shoes. Yep. They, they'll do the, the the side of the wheelchair. Man, the this whole time I thought it was about drugs. That's nah, why I thought bro, it was it's a, about explosive residue. You, ju- you just taught me something new. I love it. Yeah, bro, it's about. But, but, it, yeah, but, 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 but it's crazy. It's like you really, really think that like this dude, the amputee, is gonna take you out. Out here you know playing I mean? with explosives. Yeah, like, like, out here like, playing yeah, with bro, explosives. It Come makes on, man. no. To me, that makes no it, the, the, sense. You're, you're, it's, you're getting the most, you know, I don't want to say feeble or, or for, you know, just like people that are just hurting probably the most are scrutinized. Yeah. But the hardest, I don't understand why. Mm-hmm. The only thing that the benefit is of the airport, you know, with us is us mm-hmm. keep getting skipping the line. You know what I mean? And we know we're going to get checked. We're, we know we're going to get checked and scanned and put off to the side. Everyone's watching. We're, for yeah, me... Everybody's I, already you know, watching anyways. Yeah. It, so and, and I'm sitting there going, I'm not taking off my leg. You know what I mean? Because that's yeah. not going to happen. I'm not taking off my shoes either. Because Have they that, ever asked you to take off the leg? Because no. they asked me to get out the wheelchair. No, they, but, they have not but, asked but me I to do can't, that. Though. They, they have asked me to take off my, my shoe, and I told them, I said, I'm not doing that. Mm, you know what? I actually, told, I, I actually stopped taking off my shoes as well. It, not that I, not not that because I can't. It just I don't, I, bro. I don't feel like it. If y'all yeah, about to like, come on, dude. Like, like, just, like I, I know dude, I ain't got nothing on me. Yeah, it's like I'm not playing this game, bro. I'm just trying to fly. Yeah, yeah I ain't gonna lie, bro. It's really it, look. I understand the whole. All right, look, you got to pat me down everywhere because I can't go. I I personally can't go through the machine. All right, right. so I do. Right. I do understand that. I don't like it. But I understand it. But the sure. whole little explosive shit, like, I ain't gonna lie, it rubs me the wrong that's way. way too, it that's really way too. Rub, too bro, it rubs me the wrong way because I don't understand why they feel like the people in wheelchairs are really over here playing with explosives. It, it, like, to me, that part makes no sense because it's not like they check everybody else, you know, for explosives. No, I've never no, they're not. Yeah. I've, like, all they do this is just go through the x-ray machine. For, for the first, yeah, exactly. The very first, I mean, I've never dealt with that ever. You know what I mean? I've never once at an airport ever got scanned for bombs like that. You just go through the little thing. You put your hands up. You know what I mean? And you go through. You know, and that's it. Mm-hmm. Now, yeah. nope. They they pull us aside and make us do the whole dance and song. You know what I mean? Okay, so you you actually have to do the whole thing that somebody the same. It's the yeah. same. It's the same exact thing. That's 
I ain't gonna lie, it's kind of crazy because I feel like that. I feel like that with a, you know, like with a prosthetic leg, you could technically walk through the thing. You can yeah. technically go through the X-ray machine. It doesn't so matter though think- because they're still detecting. They're still detecting metal there, and they can't ask me to take off my leg because that's my body part. That's illegal. Then, then what's the whole point of pulling you to the side? Then if they can physically see. If they if they listen, if they can't ask you to take it off, I don't understand what's the point of actually actually. Well, that's that's the whole point. That's the whole point of of doing what they do with the you know checking you on the side with the swipe or the wipes and all that stuff because they can't do anything else. They can't they can't ask you to take it off. You know. Yeah. It's it, that's I, your I body do part. Enjoy the skipping the line part though, but but that sometimes you but, 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 you get to but sometimes first. that check. Yes, but some oh you get the boy first too. Absolutely, come on, bro. Man. Take advantage, I, you, bro. Listen, never not one time have I been in the airport, and I would say, me and my old lady get fly. I, we we go right into the front of the line, and we board first. I've, you know what? I've never seen it because every time I've, I would say, every time I've actually flown, the people that get on first day, everybody's in a wheelchair. I've never, I've never been on there, you know. And I see yeah. Andrew T get on there, and like he, but it does, it does make sense though. So. Yeah, it's crazy though. Like, you damn, never really that, would think of it. That's that's crazy, but I can see why though. Okay, so you pretty much fall under, I would say, like you, uh, like the whole ADA thing then. Yes. Mm-hmm. Oh, you see, but that's why yeah. I was telling you. Uh, shout out to Judith. J- Judith, you guys. Uh, she ended up recently. She just passed away. She, but she was one of. She's the mother of the disability rights movement. Oh wow! Yeah, bro. So, I so didn't she's the know. one that really got out there and really fought for us. That's why I was telling you about. Wow. Her. So yeah, bro. Check check it out. Crip Camp. Shout it's on Netflix. Him. It's on Netflix. Make sure you guys go check it out if you guys haven't seen it. It's an amazing documentary. Um, it, look. To be honest, I didn't even want to watch it at first. My wife put it on. Then when she put Damn. it on, I what, watched what's the name of this again? It's called Crip Camp. Man, I gotta watch this. Yeah, it's okay. called Crip Camp. It was out. actually. Uh, Michelle Obama and Barack Obama, they ex- executively producers, but I'm pretty sure they were just off. Oh, wow. Stuff. You know, they're probably but, but like making sure it was, really, yeah, yeah, they probably, probably was making sure it was written something. right and stuff. Yeah, but it, it was, man, it was, it was truly amazing to see somebody like, all right, let's, it was really cool to see the things that we have where they came from. How mm-hmm. how everything became ADA accessible? How right. you know, like you know, like why why does there have to be ramps? You know, in every you know areas, or you know, when you're going down a hill, every certain amount of feet, there has to be a a a, a like a like a plane, of yeah, like, you know, like a certain amount of feet, and then down another slope. You know, so it was really cool to see where all that comes from. But all that comes from them in this summer camp. That they attended where they created this bond and then they went off and, you know, got life started. They all went to college and then they all united in college and then started fighting for our rights and wow. stuff like that. So, but, but that's, that's crazy, crazy because I never really realized that amputees kind of fall in the that. same category. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's man, that's, pretty wild. You no, know, that's crazy. But, but then at the same time too, like, you know, you had to kind of, you know, had a wheelchair life for a little bit too. I did. So it was like you I did. I learned, my, I learned my wheelies, man. I'm dude. Yeah. I got my stuff. Okay. I still got. I still got it. Okay. You know what I mean? Okay. So, so for anybody else out there, oh, uh, 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 let me switch it up a little bit. Okay. So, for somebody who is a new amputee, what type of advice would you give to them? Um, somebody that's new. The the main thing for them is obviously they have a hard time of actually losing a part of your body. Like when you physically see it gone, that's a very hard thing for our brain to process sometimes. Yeah. And so I try to tell people like you have to find meaning in basically the deletion of what happened to you. You know, um, find meaning in, in what you lost, you know, and if you find meaning in what you lost, it's like, this is like, for instance, like me talking to you, this is the meaning for me, why this happened to me, you know, like this is part of the meaning. Um, it's that's, this is also things that I love to talk about being the mindsets, you know, it's just a different mindset than that you have to set yourself at. 
And also, like I've said, you know, many times over is strength is defined by 90% mental and 10% physical. And I really mean that. That's dope. That's dope. Now, now, now for anybody out there who would be looking, you know, to follow you on Instagram or go look you up or have any questions for you that they would like to ask you, where can they go follow you at? At Ball Valve TV. That's it. Okay. If you just type in Ball Valve TV, everyone calls me BV in short, BV. Mm-hmm. Um, that's usually like kind of like everyone like that that knows me is yeah. like the BV, you know, kind of thing. But, yeah. you know, Mike Ball, they used in, in all the different um, articles that they put out and stuff like that. So, okay. of course, I'm, that's my own name. So I'm going to use mm-hmm. it, you know. But, yeah, I man, I really it's appreciate cool. it. it. It's really cool to see what you're doing for the community out there getting out there talking, you know, about trying, your situation man. and what happened to you. And I really appreciate it because I know that this is going to do a lot for somebody who is newly injured that, I you hope, know, I might hope. feel hopeless or lost. And so that's, ways, that's my might, life will... mission, dude. I feel yes, like it, man. Yes. It's like, I ha- I have to be bedside by these people that like, yes. when they're unsure of this, like, it's like, dude, your life is just beginning. I promise you just mm. like people are going Will I be able to walk again? Like they gave me a 20% chance of walking again. Like I didn't listen to that. You know what I mean? Like I didn't care, you know, like I, I they gave me a 20% chance. I'm, I'm not even thinking about it. That's not even bumming me out because I'm going, that's not an option, you know, cause I'm going to walk it, or whatever, you know? And, and, and so I did what I just needed to do and focused on the things I need to do. And, and, and with determination um, and a lot of heart, you know, obviously mm-hmm. it's, I feel like it's also about who you surround yourself with. You know, if you're not percent. surrounding, if you're not surrounding yourself with the right people, man, it's, I mean, I couldn't have done this by myself. No way. There's no way. I, can, I mean, dude, there's nobody that can handle all this stuff by herself, but mm-hmm. the people that I surround myself with are genuine people that want to see me rise just as much as I want to see them rise. You know? Exactly. Exactly. Well, look, my man, look, I love your message. And I know that somebody out there who's duly injured is going to hear your story and is really going to get some motivation from hearing what you went through and how you overcame everything. So I appreciate you coming on the podcast, sharing your story, because I know, I know for a fact we did our job here. We did what we were supposed to do. We got the message across. All right. No, no, absolutely. And and I'm, and I truly, truly mean it. If you can, if it can affect just one person and change one person's life, even just for Mm -hmm. a moment, it doesn't have to be a lifetime change. It could just be for a moment. If I did that, I feel like I did my job. You know what I mean? And, and, and I really, Mm -hmm. really mean that. I don't, I don't say that to just like the stereotypical, you know, sayings. I really mean that. You know, um, that I, I want to see the best in people. I don't want to see the worst. You know, I, it seems like the internet really wants to see the worst in us, you know, but um, I feel like that, that, you I feel have like that, that responsibility. Saying, yeah. I, I feel like that that saying is very cliche f- for a lot of things, but for right. our situation and it's our different. story, it's it really different. does mean a lot. It hits. Even if one person here is it because you know how it feels to be at the bottom. If I was that one person, because I was that one guy. I I've promise you, I, I, exactly. I was that one guy. I was exactly. that one guy. You know what I mean? Exactly, bro. So and that's I, why. I, I, was, I was the same way. Like, like I tell people, as long as one person here, we did our job. Because I was the one person that needed the information, but I was too stubborn to ask. Mm-hmm. All right. It's so I just sat there. Ask. Yeah, I just sat there and had all these complications because I did not want to ask. I was too prideful. My yep. ego was too high. Can't and it just led to, to a whole involved. bunch of stuff. But like you said, as long as one person hears this message, we did our job. That's a fact. So I appreciate you coming on, sharing your story. You guys can go follow him at Ball Valve TV. Thank you for coming on the podcast, Mike. I appreciate you coming on telling your story. I can't thank you, thank you guys enough for, for hearing me out and for having me on your platform. And and this has been an absolute honor. And uh, I can't thank you enough. Thank you, sincerely. No, my man. I, I, look, my it was an honor having you on the podcast, brother. I appreciate I appreciate you. And look, man, we, look, we, got, we definitely got to stay in touch. Oh, you definitely you know, got to stay in touch. All right. You know that. I pre- hey, look, maybe you might teach me how to ride one day. I don't know. I don't hey, know. I don't know. I don't hey, know. Dude, I already know the setup. I already know how All the right. setup would go. So we'll talk All about right, it. All right, my man. I appreciate it. Thank you for coming on All the podcast. Appreciate you, man. All right, bro.